uh, I just heard that we will have Peter later on, but uh, I would like now to uh, turn to Ingvild Smeins Tuborg Gjede uh, from Norway. Uh, and here we have an incumbent in the sphere of uh, raw materials of critical the mission, raw materials. The mission that we have ahead of us is so big, there's no competition in mining. There's so much work for <laughs> all of a, us. It's a huge company already established. And here is uh, a wonderful new company uh, from Europe uh, called Norge Mining. Norge is for the second time partner of the World Policy Conference. And I welcome you wholeheartedly, Ingvil. You have been a Norwegian Minister for Petroleum and Energy. You also have been Minister of uh, uh, Public Security in your country, and now you bring all your experience in government uh, and also in the oil and gas business uh, to Norge Mining, which has had a, a number of, of, which has found uh, big deposits in Norway, and that is in Europe, which uh, uh, now should be exploited, and we want to learn more about that very exciting endeavor. So the floor is yours, Ingvil. Thank you so much. I hope the technology will, will manage, you know, the transportation from Norway to, to Abu Dhabi. Last year, I was participating in per person, which was in any aspect a much better solution than participating digitally, of course. I am mentioning this in particular because December is a very cold month here in Norway and I'm freezing sitting here in my own home office with electricity prices going through the roof. So I am emphasizing the climate in Norway for such an audience. Why am I doing that? Well, let me take a few steps back. Much of the focus last year's, this last year's, and rightly so, have been on mitigating the worst effect of environment from energy production and the transition to low carbon and sustainable alternatives. This approach, however, risks overlooking some crucial issues. How to bridge the gap to a sustainable future while simultaneously meeting the ever increasing demand for energy Living in Europe, I will give you the examples from the same continent. It is an energy crisis in Europe these days. Short-sighted European energy policy made it painful for all of Europe when Putin invaded Ukraine, leaving energy security back on everybody's lips. The solution seems obvious. In the short term, coal-fired plants power are reopened and the life of nuclear power plants is extended. And in the longer term, more wind and solar plants and battery factories will become even more important. Thus, the paradox arises. Europe will go from a fossil to a renewable energy system, risking that this new energy system will be much more dependent on China and Russia than the current system. The reason why? Well, it's minerals. A renewable, a renewable energy system is highly dependent on minerals, minerals defined by the EU as critical. Without these, the European economy will come to an abrupt halt. The green shift increases this dependency. As you all have been speaking about, a wind power plant needs nine times more minerals than an equivalent gas fire plant power plant. And an electric car needs six times more than a fossil car. These minerals are hardly mined in Europe, as you also have stated in the panel. Both Russia and China are major exporters. The crisis created by the invasion of Ukraine is well known. But in the event of a, a hope not conflict with uh, China, Chinese exports of CRMs will become a powerful weapon. The continent could be plunged into a crisis that turns the current energy crisis in a pale shadow. The struggle for access to minerals is also international foreign and, poli foreign and security policy. It is a conflict the West is not well prepared for. 
The West is even more dependent on Russian and Chinese minerals than on Russian and Chinese energy. As the former Minister of Public Security and the Petroleum and Energy, and now the present member of the Norwegian Defense Commission, I'm very aware of the challenges I have presented and you have talked about and that we're going to talk about in this session. I'm also aware of the highly important natural resources we are blessed to have in Norway. All and gas, abundance of hydropower. We are paying for it by bad weather conditions, though, and huge resources of different minerals. Minerals defined at the list of EU as CRMs. And I'm sure Peter will uh, be uh, talking a little bit about those in, in a little while. Currently, Europe relies on paying parts for these min materials, which brings supply chain vulnerability and geographical risks. As a result, the EU wants to increase in the European production and processing of such minerals. It should be noted that currently, Europe consumes about a quarter of the world's raw materials, but produces only about 3%. As already mentioned some sentences ago, the green energy transition to deliver a carbon neutral economy is critical raw material intensive. The global shift from fossil fuels to renewable energy can only be achieved through the mining of metals and minerals, playing the key role in green energy production and storage. So far, we, the company in which I'm a board member at Norge Mining, have completed more than 72,000 meters of drilling. And in summary, the exploration work has been tremendously successful in that we have discovered at least at, and published two world-class resources of phosphate, vanadium, and titanium, making up just about 10 to 13 percent of our uh, entire potential. I would like to underline that the approach we have taken to the project, and this is of utmost importance to us and to Europe and to the mining industry, is to embrace the highest standards of environmental and other behaviors. Alignment with the International Sustainability Programs, ESG and SDG compliance and disclosure guidances are central to our strategy for becoming a responsible, a responsible mining and processes business. The E argument for increasing the production of raw materials in Europe has never been stronger, nor need more urgent. Phosphate, vanadium and titanium are all on the list of CRMs and they have all been found in our licenses in Norway. Phosphate is very much uh, a case in this point. I had to mention this because it was not mentioned before. Phosphate was added to the list in 2014 and has remained on the list ever since. It is concluded because of its key role in the agriculture industry in the production of fertilizers and for the food security. Almost all of around 95% of phosphate produced is used in fertilizers. So phosphate is absolutely central to the security and of food supply. But phosphate is also increasingly important in the green energy transition, as mentioned. Owing to its use of LFP batteries, such as electric vehicles and static energy storage, China is the world's biggest producer of phosphate of today, followed by Morocco, the US, and Russia. The war in Ukraine has weaponized natural resources, particular energy, but also phosphate. The conflict also has weaponized grain supply, which further threatens food security, which will have effect on a broader scale. EU has historically improved, imported most of its phosphate from Russia. The invasion of Ukraine has created an urgent requirement to prevent dependency on Russia. There could be, couldn't be any better time to develop the phosphate industry in a stable environment in the heart of Europe, in, Nor in Norway. It will create security of supply in Europe and beyond, thereby contributing to food security and positively also reflect a thousand miles away. And I also have to mention that Norway's resources would last 50 years and beyond. The vast resources of phosphate in Norway could underpin the emergency of a European LFB battery industry. So let me conclude and 
come back to me starting talking about the outside temperature here in Norway. The energy crisis we are experiencing now are to be followed by a much more widespread crisis, CRMs. Without our own mining industry, Europe is building its renewable energy system on Chinese and Russian soil. And I think that should worry all Europeans. And thank you so much for having this topic in this conference. Well, we thank, thank you for your, for your attention. Thank you. We thank you, Ingvild, for, uh, for your time. And uh, we do hope that, uh, that what you have started with, with Norge Mining will, will uh, get stronger and stronger. And